All right, so last class, I showed you guys how to divide polynomials using a process called long division. And long division is great. It accomplishes everything we want it to, but it's a little long to actually write it all out. There is a second method you can use to divide polynomials called synthetic division. And synthetic division takes an example or two to kind of figure out what's going on. Once you see it, though, and once it clicks, it is a lot faster and a lot easier, most people feel, than um, the long division way I showed you yesterday. I only need you to know really strongly one of the two methods because they accomplish the exact same thing. So you're going to try both of them out. You already tried out long division. We'll try out synthetic division today. And after you've done the homework on both of them, you can choose. I can, you can use either method on the quiz or test. I don't need you to just show me both. So see this one through, decide which one you like better. Um, the only differences here, or the main differences are right here. Instead of using the factor, you're going to use the roots. Um, you're going to have just coefficients, no variables, and you're going to add instead of subtract. Those three rules make most people like synthetic division better. Although, like I said, you get to, after you try both, you get to choose which one you like better. And we'll kind of go into an example here. I'll leave the rules on the screen, um, and you'll see how it works. So you look at what you're dividing by right here. We're dividing by x plus 4. If we were doing long division, we would actually put x plus 4 on the outside. If we're doing synthetic division, though, we put the roots. The root is the solution, which is negative 4, and that's what goes outside. I usually write this as like an inverted division box, like upside down right here, enough so you can have two lines of numbers. Um, you might see it written slightly different with how you do your box, but this is how I was taught. On the inside, you'll have just the coefficients, the top row, coefficients on your numbers. So it's a 1x squared, it's a positive 11, and it's a positive 28 right here. Kids end up liking this better sometimes because there's no variables here. You just have your numbers. When you start the synthetic division process, you always drag down your first number. You drag it down and your answer goes on the bottom here. So the 1 just carries down. Then you do this number times this number and put that right here. So you do negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. That goes into the next slot. This times this equals this. And then you add those two numbers together. 11 plus negative 4. Again, we're adding, not subtracting. You get a 7 there, 11 plus negative 4. And then you do this times this. Negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. You get finally a 0, and the problem is done. When you get your answer, you have to interpret it. The first number, you read it actually backwards, starting with the zero here, this is your answer. This guy is like your remainder. So that guy right there, the remainder, oops, remainder, tells you that there is no um, leftover, no remainder, so it goes in evenly. This next term right here, it works backwards. This is your constant term. This guy is your linear term. If you had another term, it would be your quadratic term, your cubic term. So it just starts working backwards from the constant. So if you see a 1 and a 7 here, that means that this factors into, it's like a 1x plus 7. And that's what I would actually write for my answer here, just x plus 7 or 1x plus 7. So if you divide these out, you get 1x plus 7 right here for your answer, which would agree with what happens if you do long division. And actually this factors and cancels, so this does make sense for our answer here. So after seeing one example, you can kind of see, like, look at how much less writing we had to do. You kind of have to learn the process, but it's a lot more compact and clean than long division. Personally, people tell me I'm weird for this, but I actually do like long division better. I like being able to see my variables and know what I'm doing here, but a lot of people find this nicer. Again, it's totally a matter of preference. So let's set up the second problem here. Um, again, you put the root on the outside. If it's x minus 2, you're going to put it positive 2. And then on the inside here, we do our coefficients. We got a 3, we have negative 40, and we have 11. First guy, you just drag down. So 3 just goes all the way down to the bottom. You do this times this. 2 times 3 is 6. You add those together. Negative 40 and 6 is negative 34. 2 times negative 34 is negative 68. 11 plus negative 68 is going to be negative 57. Problem's done. Now we have to rewrite it. First number is our remainder. We have a remainder on this one. This is our linear term. This is our, sorry, this is our constant term. This is our linear term. So it's going to be 3x minus 34 for that part. And just like we would do with long division, if we have a remainder, we put that over the thing we divided by in the original problem. So it's going to be negative 57 over this. So I'll put minus 
it'll be 57 over x minus 2, just like what you would do on log division. So this guy right here is going to be your answer. I have two more problems in this video. We'll go over one of them together, and I'm going to have you just actually try um, the last one yourself. So on this third problem right here, there's nothing that says it has to be x squared where we have on top. We can divide this just like normal. We have x plus 6, so we're looking at a negative 6 on the outside. On the inside, I have a 5. I'm missing an x squared. You have to remember to put a 0 there if there's a missing term. So that, right, is a note to yourself. Um, same thing we do in long division. Remember to put 0 for missing terms. If you don't do that, it screws up the whole process. So we have a 0 x squared. Then it's a negative 160 in the x spot. And it's a 125 in the constant spot. So it looks like this to set up our problem. Drag down, first number, 5 goes right here. Negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Add those, get negative 30. Negative 6 times negative 30 is 180. And you can see how fast this goes once you get used to it. Negative 160 and 180 is a positive 20. Negative 6 times 120. Negative 120 looks like that's going to be a 5 here. So go ahead and interpret your answer here. I'll do it as well. Remainder, 5. Lin sorry, constant, linear, quadratic term. So this is going to be, when you divide these guys right here, you're going to get 5x squared minus 30x plus 20. My remainder is a positive 5, so it's going to be a plus. It'll be 5 over x plus 6 on the end there, instead of writing the remainder piece. So that's what we would get for our final answer when we divide this. You can see, um, again, it takes up a little, just a little bit of space, and it's kind of quick. For this last problem here, why don't you go ahead and pause the video, and um, you can just skip ahead. I'm going to try to work through it fast, but you can skip ahead to where I actually put the final answer down. Um, so just check, make sure that you do, in fact, have the problem written down and pause it now. So let me go really fast. We got a negative 10, 30, 20, and then there's no constant term, so you'd have a zero there. Drag this down, and just go through the steps that you guys get pretty good at after a while. It looks like you would have this as your setup. So we got negative 10x squared minus 20x plus 120, and it's going to be plus 600 over the thing we divided by, which is x minus 5. So that is going to be our final answer.